Okay, I've been wanting to do this for a while. So I'm going to be providing director's commentary on Dagon Wrestling, starting with episode one. Alright, so this intro is obviously a parody of the then-now-forever intro in the modern WWE stuff. So for this intro, I wanted to use official art of Dog and Rumpa characters. I didn't want to use fan art, because I didn't want to steal anyone's art and put it in my dumb thing. So this is all official art from like the anime or the video game concept art or something like that. It was really hard to find high resolution pictures of all this stuff. And it kind of didn't matter, because if you look at the Hope's Peak Academy logo when it's zooming out from it, it's super freaking low res. And you know, I later fix it. I would later remake the Hope Peak Academy logo in higher resolution, but that wouldn't be until Dog and Wrestling 6. I would later replace some of the art in this intro with like my alpacas and stuff uh, in later episodes. Just you know, because I wanted to show off my alpacas, just put them in the intro. Whatever. And here it says Hope, Anime, Despair to replace the whole Zen Now Forever from the WWE product. Okay, I need to address this thing right here. It says, I don't know anything about wrestling, which at this point when I was making this, that was true. Because prior to this, my only exposure to wrestling was watching like WCW in the 1990-whatever, in the 90s. And then again, I watched it in the early 2000s around the time of WrestleMania 18 specifically because I remember there was a commercial for the video game with a Drowning Pool song that would play on commercials all the time. And also have like memories of like Booker T and Goldust at the tag team, so it was probably around the time of the Scorpion King movie. Anyway, those are the only times I ever watched wrestling. Was I was in elementary school during the '90s, and sometime in like middle school or whatever during the uh, 2000s or whatever. And like, I could I could never convince my parents to buy pay per views, so I never really followed wrestling that much until like the WWE Network came out, and when I was an adult and I could afford to pay ten bucks a month to watch wrestling. So, anyway, in order to create this Dog and Ropa WWE crossover, I needed to do some research on wrestling, to brush up my wrestling knowledge, and that research involved watching a lot of wrestling. And, uh, you know, I started off, rest, you know, I, watching wrestling ironically, like, oh, I'm going to watch it for this dumb thing, doing this stupid crossover story. But eventually that, that stupid, ironic, you know, stuff mutated into a horribly genuine interest in the modern wrestling product and now I know stuff about wrestling now so at the time I didn't know anything about wrestling and now I know stuff about wrestling and I put that disclaimer in there because in case I got anything wrong about wrestling like in case I got some terminology wrong or I got a character wrong about wrestling that was my excuse by John for why I got that wrong because I, I don't know anything about wrestling well now I do and shut up. <laughs> okay. So this guy. This is the reason why I... One of the big reasons I started watching wrestling again. And why all this... Why I was my interest in wrestling was rekindled. Rekindled. Stardust, right? So I was always... Not always. I was a big Goldust fan back in the day. You know, I talk about you know Booker T and Goldust. That's when I fell in love with Goldust because he was so hilarious. Well, when I heard that Cody Rhodes, Goldust's brother in real life, or whatever his name is, Cody Rhodes was transformed into Stardust, this weirdo in gold face, point, face paint and a shiny black jumpsuit, just like freaking Goldust, I was like, oh man, why did this happen? That's so cool. Stardust such a cool character. I want to know why... Cody became Stardust, and you know, I didn't really, we still don't really know why. So I decided to make my own story about how Cody became Stardust, and that wrapped into, you know, Dog and Wrestling, because I was already making a Dog and Ropa story with WWE. Might as well, you know, kill two pigs with one stone or whatever, and have it also be a Stardust origin story. So that's why Stardust plays such a big role in Dog and Wrestling. So here's Jim Ross. He's doing commentary for Raw, which doesn't make sense because he doesn't work for the company anymore. And this is like the only time he appears outside of the Shadow John Cena fight. So I don't know. I didn't really know any other commentators at this point. I didn't really know who Michael Cole was. Anyway, here's John Cena talking to the audience. He brings up uh, Baja Blast a lot. 
the Mountain Dew Baja Blast because at the time I made this, there was some fighting game tournament that just ended that was, it was sponsored by Baja Blast. And there was some Twitter account called FGC Jim Ross that would pretend to be Jim Ross while freaking talking about fighting games and Baja Blast. And I thought it was hilarious. So I put, can you make it to the Baja Blast in here? And here's the appearance of Monokuma. Now you might be wondering, why doesn't he look like a bear? Because you could totally make a character in, in this game that looks like a bear, but instead he just looks like a big buff dude. It's just because I thought it would be hilarious if Monokuma was just a big buff dude in his underwear and socks. And you know, it was funny. And this was before Daganronpa 2 came out, where he actually does become like a big buff Monokuma in that game, so... This wasn't influenced by that at all, I just thought it was hilarious. Here's Maka Cole, I don't know shit about him. And fucking Jerry Lawler spilled his Mountain, Diet Mountain Dew. It's not Baja Blast, but whatever, it's fine. It's Mountain Dew, still. And Monokuma comes to join them in commentary, because, you know, whatever. You know, when I... <laughs> Jerry Lawler, Lawler cur curses. That would not... That's not very PG. But when I was making this, this story, I, w I didn't have a script written out beforehand. I would just like make scenes as I went along. I was like, what you know, what should happen next? Uh, maybe Monokuma comes to talk to the commentators about some dumb bullshit. And well, what, what should I do next? Maybe Monokuma, you know, he talks about how he's gonna kill all the wrestlers or something. So I, I didn't have a script for this. I only had a script for Dog and Wrestling Five. No, wait. I had a script for Dog and Wrestling Four through Six. That's when I actually started caring about the story. But at this point, I was just like, whatever, I'll just write things as, like, as it comes to mind, you know, stream of consciousness, consciousness type shit. Here's Monokuma beating the shit out of some wrestlers. Uh, maybe he's killing them? I don't know. You could just consider these, like, cameos from some of the wrestlers, because, you know, you gotta put Daniel Bryan in there somewhere, right? Here's Big Show, about to get blown up by a car. I guess he's dead. Whatever. Who cares? He's the Big Show. The Raw Arena is basically the new Hope Speak Academy, because... These thousands of people are locked in this arena and they can't get out. <laughs> As opposed to like the 16 students who are locked in the school before. Now there's thousands of people locked in this arena. Whatever. There's Triple H. At the time, I was not very familiar with Triple H's authority gimmick. I just knew he was like a boss because he was like related to Stephanie McMahon or whatever. Because he's... I don't know. I just knew he was in charge. He, he wears a suit now and he cut his hair. At the time, that's all I knew about Triple H. Okay. So, Stardust and Goldust in this room. Originally, I think this was supposed to be Stardust and Goldust in the future, looking back to before he became Stardust. And he wanted to, I don't know, I don't remember exactly what it was, but this is Stardust being all omnipotent or whatever. I guess he's just trying to ensure that they become Stardust in the future by leading Cody down this weird anime road or something. I don't know, I don't remember. And I forgot to cut out the loading screen there. Anyway, here is our heroine, my second favorite character from Danganronpa 1, Kyoko Kirigiri. I purposely did not choose to include Makoto Naegi in this story because I think he sucks and he's boring and he's shitty. So I, I chose Kirigiri to be the star because fuck Makoto. Now these two characters look kind of weird because I was just getting used to the WWE 2K14 uh, story editor. Not story editor, character creator. And I wasn't really sure how to use custom textures to make outfits or whatever. So Kirigiri looks weird in her little jacket and tie. And Sakura looks weird because I made her in the Create a Diva feature. And for some reason you can't really make a make female characters in this game have a really muscular physique. So I, I would later remake her as a male character to give her more muscles. You know, make her look more buff or whatever. Because, you know, she's Sakura. She's gotta be buff. Alright, here's... <laughs> Asahina listening in to Triple H and Monokuma. Here, Monokuma freaking lies to Triple H because Monokuma says he will let the WWE super Superstars go if they kill the kids or whatever. I don't remember. I guess we'll find out. But that's not true. <laughs> Later on in Dark Wrestling 5 or whatever, he says that Mo Monokuma says that he'll only let one person go, just like in the games. But here he's saying, oh, let all the superstars go. So, oops, I retconned that. My bad. Sorry. <laughs> now, Asahina here is probably the most successful created wrestler in the series so far. I feel like I got pretty close to her, even without the loopy anime hair from the video game, from the original game. Um, the game doesn't really let you texture sleeves for wrestler costumes, so those, those little, like, stripes on her arm, like, those are just tattoos. 
She's actually wearing a sleeveless vest, and I had to paint the sleeves on her arms with a custom tattoo texture just to get those white lines on there, so that's kind of weird. Um, here, you'll see the Rock Retro, because he's the default character in this scene, and because I didn't unlock him in the actual campaign, he becomes the modern Rock with the weird Samoan tattoo later, so that continuity error is because I, I never unlocked the Rock Retro, so sorry about that too. Another thing you might notice in this series is that all the all the representatives from Danganronpa 1 besides Monokuma are all female characters. And that's on purpose because I did not really like any of the male characters in Danganronpa 1. So I didn't include them. I just included characters I liked. And, and Fukawa also, I guess, because she's popular. <laughs> Whatever. Um... And also, it also creates like an interesting contrast between the the female students of Hope's Peak and the male roster of the WWE in this series. Oh, and here it is, the scene where they first meet. I put this on a vine on Tumblr and I got a bunch of reblogs or something. Oh wait, that was Monokuma instead of Cody Rhodes. Whatever. I don't know. I wasn't really thinking about the character relationships at this time. Uh, so I wasn't really thinking about, oh, I'm going to ship Kirigiri and Stardust. That just became a kind of thing later because I thought it was funny to ship a WWE character with a Danganronpa character. But speaking of Tumblr, there's this one GIF set I made, or GIF set, however you want to pronounce it, back in the day of Sakura and Asahina hitting Monokuma with a chair. And I made that as like a test for this series to see if I could make those wrestlers and see what I could do in the story designer with them. And that freaking Tumblr post blew the hell up. I think it has like 20,000 notes on it, like reblogs and likes or whatever. And it still gets notes from time to time. And it's kind of annoying that that GIF set is more popular than the actual thing I worked on. It's more popular than actual dog on wrestling. Uh, like I want people to know that that's from Dog and Wrestling. Even though that scene's not exactly in Dog and Wrestling, it's part of Dog and Wrestling. But people just reblog that GIF set. I mean, I, yeah, I guess it's easier to consume a five second clip GIF set on Tumblr than four hours of story in the on YouTube or whatever. But hey, whatever. People do what they want. And okay, so in this scene, you'll notice that when Monokuma talks, his name is in the text box. That's because the story designer in WWE games are freaking glitchy as shit, and it just decides not to show up text boxes from, or name boxes from time to time. And at this point, I didn't really care about the presentation of the series, I didn't care about the production values, so I just left it there. But later, when I did start caring about the production value, I had to add in the names manually whenever that happened. That was super annoying. So, <laughs> fuck that. Oh, here we go. Here's the modern rock with his... Samoan tattoo that he got in between the ring scene and now. So, okay. So, uh, you know, Asahina makes fun of the Hercules movie here. I've never seen it. I don't know if it's good or not, but it was an easy, lazy joke to make, to make fun of that movie. So, if that movie's good, sorry. If that movie's shitty, oh, oh well. But it'd be not a big deal. So Asahina and The Rock are about to wrestle. It'll be the first wrestling match of the series. And here's the thing about wrestling females and males in this game. They don't normally allow intergender matches in uh, these video games. Because I guess because it's like something about like Mattel doesn't, the, the toy company doesn't want to, you know, male on female violence shown on TV or whatever. and the, so they don't allow you to wrestle each wrestle male and females against each other in these games. So the way I was able to do this is because um, somebody hacked a female wrestler uh, to make it seem like it was a male wrestler, which is why you hear the commentary say refer to the females with the male pronouns and stuff like that. So I knew about this before I bought WWE 2K14. It's one of the reasons I bought WWE 2K14 to make this because I knew that the hacked wrestler was in there and I'd be able to have the female wrestler, the female characters wrestle people like The Rock and fucking John Cena and all that stuff. So yeah, I, I, I think the 2K14 servers are down now, so you probably can't even download her anymore, the hacked wrestler. So that sucks. 
and it's probably one of the reasons that if, if they ever make a story designer again into newer games, uh, I'm going to have to use make it female versus female, and at least, you know, WWE has divas that are cool now, like freaking Sasha Banks and Charlotte, so maybe someday we'll have Kiri Yuri and Asahina versus Sasha Banks and Charlotte, wouldn't that be cool? There's some, uh, you know, wrestling entrance music and stuff. I really don't know much about The Rock, honestly. I, see, I thought a Tooth Fairy, that was pretty funny. I think, I don't remember. I, I, didn't, I never really watched wrestling when The Rock was big. I mean, I guess The Rock's still big, but when he was actually wrestling. Like I said, I started watching when The Scorpion King was out, and he was too busy acting in, a movie, in, the, on the, in the movies. Alright, so here's the first wrestling match of the series. You know, a lot of people wonder if VGCW had any influence on Dog and Wrestling, and for the most part, it didn't really. Like, I've been doing this stuff, doing these dumb video game wrestling stories for a very long time. But I did steal one thing from VGCW, and that was AI versus AI matches. Like, I have no idea how to play these games. I never learned how to play them. I only got the games to make stupid wrestlers and stupid storylines. That's all I ever do in these games. I don't actually play them, because I think they suck. But, you know, unlike my previous wrestling stories, I wanted Dog and Wrestling to actually have wrestling in it. But I still didn't have the patience to actually learn how to play the game. So I took a note from VGCW's book and just chose to have computer-controlled characters fight each other. But unlike VGCW, and, you know, closer to real wrestling, I guess, I actually had the winners of the matches predetermined. Like, I wanted specific characters to win to advance the story. So in these, But in these CPU-controlled matches, the wrong character would win pretty frequently. And I would have to re-record the match all over again. Like, I'm pretty sure I recorded the Rock vs. Essena match right now. Uh, I, I recorded it multiple times because the Rock has so much, has way higher stats than Asahina, and he would pretty much win every time. In fact, you know, you could tell at the end of this match that it's actually two separate matches because I had a really good uh, CPU match, but the Rock still ended up winning, and I didn't want that, so I ended up splicing a second, splicing in a second match where you can see Asahina becomes player controlled it's because I'm actually controlling her because I wanted her to I wanted to take over and force her to perform a finisher on the rock and win but I still had no idea how to f do finishers because I didn't know how to play this game so later on at the right end of the match you can see me struggling to hit with the controls for a bit before I actually hit the finisher now here's the thing I, I probably rec I recognize about these matches I figure most people probably don't care about the parts where they actually wrestle. They probably just care about the storyline. Which, you know, some people actually watch wrestling that way. They don't care about the wrestling, they just want it in the storyline. So, when I first started this series, I included, like, annotations on YouTube video, on the YouTube video, to let viewers skip the matches. And, you know, because, you know, I, you know, it's a courtesy to people. I'm not going to make them watch 20 minutes of video, which is ironic because later on the episode, episodes will become, like, an hour long. But... Later I stopped doing the whole skipping wrestling matches thing because I put so much effort into trying to get cool matches. You know, I just wanted freaking clips of Asahina doing like fucking choke slams or whatever on The Rock or Kiri Giri doing the pedigree to Triple H or something. Like, I think it's hilarious having like high school girls do wrestling moves. That's cool. That's very anime. See, this is all AI control stuff, whatever. I really wish there was better options for, like, camera control. So I get, like, cool, like, camera angles. And plus, if I could change the camera, it'd be a lot easier to cut cut matches together. Because, you know, when a camera angle changes, you can cut the match. Like that. But, you know, that's still one match. But if I wanted to splice in a second match there, I probably could. If I just have her do the same move and, you know, hopefully you wouldn't notice that she's in a different position in the ring. And the commentary doesn't help at all, it's just dumb bullshit. Hey, there! See, you see the icon that says pin and F? That means I'm in control of this character. And you see me struggling to do anything. I'm trying to figure out how to move move him to the turnbuckle so I can jump off and do the finisher. And, oh, I, I didn't realize I could pin him right there, so I pin him right here. And then Asina wins. Because I took control. <laughs> because that was actually a second match that I recorded. Another thing about this thing is, the character victory theme is really hard to do because Dog and Robot doesn't have specific character themes. So it was really hard to pick what music to play whenever they entered the match or won the match or whatever. 
So I end up just using like actual WWE themes for characters later on that might I thought might fit the character. Like when Kiryu comes out the edges music or whatever in Dragon Wrestling Six. So I wish Dragon Ropa had character themes, so it'd be easier to pick the music. But I just end up picking random music from like not stop debates or whatever to represent their th character themes at the beginning. And it's celebrating for way too long. And Monokuma comes out right here for no reason. Well, there is a reason, but no story reason. Like, the reason I wanted Monokuma to come out and scare Austin, he's not going to do anything. He's not going to kill her or anything, so there's no reason for Austin to be scared. But I just wanted an excuse for Sakura to come into the ring and save her and to use this music clip because I think it's really cool. <laughs> I, like, I like this song a lot. I think it's called New World Order on the soundtrack of Danganronpa. Here, I have a lot of typos in this series because using a USB keyboard on this game is really finicky or whatever. Here's Triple H being all goody two shoes, not wanting to kill kids. And here's you know some commentary on how people view wrestling. It's a performance art. It's you know like theater. <laughs> and I, I said six inch pythons. I'm pretty sure six inch pythons are way too small. I think it's probably like 26 or something when it's how big it's supposed to be. I don't know. That was a typo. Whatever. Yeah, I have to put in the reference to Scooby Doo WrestleMania Mystery. Go look it up. Here's Junko magically coming out of the couch because, like I said, the story designer is super glitchy. And here her hair is like really pink. Actually, I actually don't even know what color Junko's hair is supposed to be, but I make it... I know it's not that pink, so I fix it later on in the series. Yeah, you should watch the Scooby-Doo wrestling uh, WWE crossover. I mean, that, I guess you could call that inspiration for Danganronpa Dragon Wrestling. Because that's another weird crossover you wouldn't expect to happen, right? Scooby-Doo and WWE? Maybe someday they'll make Danganronpa WWE official. I don't know. Go talk to Spike Chunsoft in WWE at that. Here is Mr. Sagat. And now this series is a Street Fighter crossover too. Now why did I pick Sagat? Well, I actually had a very specific story I wanted to, wanted to do with him, but I ended up not including it in the series actually. I'll, but I'll get into that stuff in a later episode. Now, this Sagat, I didn't make him. I didn't make this creative wrestler uh, because his inclusion was kind of last minute. I just downloaded it from the WWE 2K14 community curation servers. Uh, just like Stardust and Goldust, I didn't make those characters either. You can find the names of the people who made those wrestlers uh, in the credits of the Dog and Wrestling Halloween special. So there you go. The Deadly Alliance of Shadowloo, Monokuma, and The Authority. The game. I forgot about that. <laughs> Apparently, Triple H is a big Street Fighter fan. I don't think so in real life, but hey. And that's it. That's the end of Dog and Wrestling. Episode 1. I mean, Monday Night Monokuma. Now, here's something I want to talk about. Why? I'm sure most people want to know why did I make Dog and Wrestling? The Danganronpa cross WWE crossover. Why would I do something like that? Well, it's a long story, so I'm gonna start telling it now because I don't know if I'll have time in the other episodes to talk about this. So it all started when I saw on Tumblr, yeah, everything starts with Tumblr, uh, a picture of a created wrestler of Nanako from Persona 4, except she was like a big buff dude and is also like a really creepy Teddy Dexter. And like it had like under their tag name, it said like, "Welcome home, big bro," and I thought it was freaking hilarious. I wish I could find that picture again, but I don't know. I was like, "Oh, there's all these people making this Persona stuff in the wrestling games. That's cool." So like, way later when I now when I would actually start playing Dog and Ropa and finish it, I finished Dog and Ropa. I was like, "Man, this game's really cool." It's like. There's got to be Dog and Rompa wrestling stuff out there. If there's Persona wrestling stuff out there, there should be some Dog and Rompa wrestling stuff. And it turns out there wasn't. I was like, "What the fuck? How is there not any Dog and Rompa wrestling stuff?" And I was like, "I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna be the first one to make some weird Dog and Dog and Rompa characters in a wrestling game." And I did it. 
I took my copy of SmackDown vs. Raw t 2010, which is the only wrestling video game I had that could create wrestlers. And uh, I made a really shitty Kirigiri and a really shitty Junko, and I made a, I had them fight and I uploaded the match to YouTube. And then I was like, you know what? I'm still not satisfied. I want to make a story. So I had previously done these really stupid video game wrestling storylines using SmackDown vs. Raw 2010, which was the first version of the game that had a story designer. And then you can find them on my YouTube channel. There's a this two-part episode series called Attack of the Clones, in which John Cena clones himself and gives birth to Goldust and Jim Ross. Oh, and Mark Henry finds secret porn, and he gets... He holds a tournament to see who gets the porn. <laughs> and then there's also the uh, WWE vs. Mortal Kombat, The Emerging of the Realms, which is a story I made about, obviously, WWE and Mortal Kombat crossover, in which Shao Kahn comes to invade the WWE, and he's going to hold a tournament in the WWE to take over Earthrealm, and he recruits John Cena, and then Mark Henry gives Scorpion and Sub-Zero a giant pizza, and... Yeah... Mark Henry is actually a reoccurring character in all my stories. I like to think that all the stories are canon, actually. And Mark Henry is the same Mark Henry in between all of them. Even though he dies in the Mortal Kombat one, and Agent York from Deadly Preparation has to solve his murder. That was pretty fun. You should, you should check that out. Like, that video for a long, the longest time was the most popular video on my YouTube channel. And I guess it started the trend of all my popular videos being fucking wrestling videos. And this is before I actually was into wrestling, like for real. So, that's fucking weird. Anyway, back to the idea. Why Danganronpa and WWE? Like, I just did it for me, because I thought it was a really funny idea. I, w I wasn't expecting it to be popular. Like, people say, hey man, you know, this is really cool and all, but you know, it's a very specific audience, you know, no one, there probably aren't that many people out there who are Danganronpa fans and big wrestling fans, which actually turns out there are quite a few people I've seen on the internet who are actually big fans of Danganronpa and wrestling. Like, I go, I go on NeoGAF and I see, like, people posting in the wrestling thread with freaking Ibuki from Danganronpa 2 as their avatar or whatever. I'm like, that's fucking cool. I didn't know that. I just thought it'd be a really funny, j dumb joke. And, you know, I wasn't expecting it to be popular. Like, this was all just a project of passion. I wanted to do it because I thought it was funny and I had fun, I had fun time doing it. And... Now I want it to be popular because, you know, I worked so freaking hard on it. Like, it started off as a really dumb joke, and it became even dumber the more serious I took. The more serious I took it, like, make improving the production values, fucking getting voice actors, and spending out months working on this shit, writing actual scripts for later episodes. Gosh, this thing got way out of hand, and. I know, I'm I'm pleased with it. Like even if it's not not going to be the next like Danganronpa bridge, it's not going to be as popular as that. You know, Danganronpa fans aren't going to be quoting this at cons or whatever. Although that'd be cool. I'm trying my hardest to get that to happen, but probably not going to happen. You know, I had a really fun time with it, and I'm I'm glad that people enjoyed it, and you know I want I want to do more. So I'll be back probably <laughs> with. Uh, more commentary videos on the series. So I guess the next one will be Dog and Wrestling 2. What the hell is that name? I think it's called Shadows. That's the one with Shadow John Cena, right? Oh boy. I have so many stories to tell about Shadow John Cena. Anyway, that'll be it for now. Check back soon for more stuff.